You know what an IOC or a VOC is? These stand for internal organizing committees or volunteer organizing committees, depending on the union. Welcome to Union Free Words of Wisdom. My name is Bob Carroll. I'm the Executive Vice President at Permanent Solutions Labor Consultants. And I want you to know how a small group of negative employees or employees who may have a real world frustration who have turned to the union can potentially cause complete chaos if they ever choose to unionize you. Have you ever wondered how the unions are able to get their hooks into the employees, often undetected for months before an employer is hit with an NLRB RC petition? It all starts with what is known as an internal organizing committee or volunteer organizing committee. This is a small group of employees who are working with a union organizer or organizers to get employees to sign union cards with the hopes of filing an NLRB petition with their goal of successfully unionizing a facility. Today I'm taking the union's own words, own words from this book. This is an actual guidebook for an internal organizing committee, or in this case, uh, this, it's the steel workers, so it's a volunteer organizing committee. And since it would take way more than 10 minutes to go through this whole book, I'm going to make this a multi-part series. So for today, I'm going to hit on what the volunteer organizing committee is asked to do. Next week, I'll go deeper and explain how they do it and what they do with some of these responsibilities. I'll do some of that today, but we'll get a lot deeper next week. For now, let's focus on a section of the book titled, What Can a Committee Member Do to Help? In the book, it reads, you can assist the organizer in obtaining basic information, such as details about the company, its ownership, structure, history, products manufactured, other facilities owned by the same company, employee relations po policies, and other information about its operations. Trust me, if the union ever targets you, they will know more about you than you can fathom. And they're very good at digging up dirt. The union also asks for a layout of the workplace, including a precise diagram of it. The union will use this to track their progress. They're very sophisticated and use this information to their advantage, looking for specific areas of weakness to be exploited. They also use this to develop a master plan on how to best communicate to the most unsatisfied groups of employees section by section. Although it's still trespassing, I've had quite a few experiences where union organizers snuck into their target's building and were organizing right under the employer's nose. If this happens, ask them to leave or better yet, just call the authorities. The union wants to know the nature of the work performed, the occupations involved, the kinds of equipment used, the number of work shifts. Again, the union is very good at building a platform for the campaign. Information can concerning the employees to be organized, such as names, addresses, phone numbers, departments, shifts, um, are also asked for. Although not listed in this book directly, having a former international organizing director as our president and CEO, we know that the unions also gather information on the leadership team to use to their advantage. They also want to know the employer's past efforts with other union organizing drives. Remember this, an employer must win every campaign. The union only has to win once. The union knows that the more attempts there have been to organize a, an organization, the higher their odds are at a win. The unions are asking for information about distri distribution of work force by various departments, occupational groups, skills, etc. They want to know the composition of the age groups and a breakdown by sex, race, and ethnic groups. Remember, the unions have resources and money, and they're very good at matching organizers to the group's social economic makeup to increase their odds of winning. The issues of, about which the employees are concerned, including the history behind them and the employer's position in regard to them is important to the union. This is the union's money maker. These issues, if emotional enough, will become the foundation to the campaign. Again, this is why it is so vital that you always know your workforce. 
You should know these issues beforehand and do your best to address them way before a union gets involved. The union also asks for any other pertinent information which will help the organizer serve the best interest of the employees. It goes on to say that the volunteer organizing committee is the eyes, ears, and voice of the organizing campaign within the workplace. In the book, they state that the committee members should make notes on their own time of every questionable activity by supervision related to the campaign. I can't stress this enough. If there is a union campaign, more than likely, you will not know it unless an organizer gets sloppy. You should always assume that you're being watched by employees and you're on center stage. And you are always being watched. It's human nature for employees to watch and live with both positive and negative supervision. That's why we say you're always in a union campaign, you just don't know it. It's great practice to be careful with your words and actions anyways. You want a good reputation as an employer, right? So make sure your supervisors are doing their part to make that happen. If not, you will find yourself becoming a revolving door of employees coming and going. And that not only kills morale, it costs employers a boatload of money that could be used elsewhere. The union then urges the committee to document the who's, what, and when, and where's and the names of witnesses to any activity that is questionable on behalf of the supervisors. And that they go on to say that it should be reported to the union organizer. The book goes on to say that the committee should provide them with the employee handbook along with this information. Uh, they want information on pensions and insurances. Uh, th this is usually one of the first things that the unions will ask for. They want to know if you follow policy or not. They will also dissect your handbook looking for illegal provisions that they can use against you. And finally, they ask the committee to determine which law firm or anti-union consultant, as they put it, uh, is representing the company. This is why we encourage people hiring consultants, even us, to do their homework. It is so easy these days. Just Google the firm you're talking to and you should find everything you need to know. I'm a strong believer in professionalism and ethics, as is our firm, but I have to admit there's some consultants out there who lack ethical behavior and have had some issues in their career. Do yourself a favor and vet the consultants you work with. Now that you know what the union is asking the committee to look for, you can tell that the union has a solid system in place to build a campaign against the targeted em employers. Remember, the union more than likely will not proceed with a union campaign if the employees want nothing more than just money. The union wants issues. In fact, the book goes on to say, and I quote, and it's written in bold capital letters, issues are to be used in the campaigns and they're vital. Once you identify these concerns, the organizer can work with you to frame the issues to special importance to all employees. Only by keeping these issues before the workers do you keep the employer on the defensive. End quote. The union's 100% right about this. Issues with emotional attachment create an environment that is ripe for unionization. This is why we train organizations on a proactive union on proactive union avoidance with such a strong focus on doing what is right for the right reasons and to have strong employee engagement and relationships. That's it for this week. I have a lot more to talk about in this book. That's one section made up of four pages and it's quite informative. But just wait, this book is a gold mine of information that if used right, will teach employers exactly how to be proactive against union activity and build a firewall between the unions and the employees. Thanks again for watching. I'll be, be, I'll be back next week with a lot more. Just remember, if you want to stay union free, call PSLC.